It is so hot out right now. Check this out. I'm pretty sure Minnesota might be the only place that tomorrow this might this might have a minus symbol in front of it. <laughs> Weather jokes. Maybe maybe this YouTube thing isn't going to work out after all. Hey, it's Nomato. So today we're gonna look at the scan and pan module from Verbos Electronics. <laughs> now, uh, I won't lie, the very first time that I saw this module, I kind of thought to myself, that's kind of an expensive way to pan things. But realistically, that's about the equivalent of saying that the circadian rhythms is a very expensive etch-a-sketch. Jellyfish. I've had this module for a while now and it is so much fun to run just about anything in the Eurorack realm through it and see what kind of results that you get. So today I'm gonna show you why you need to get one of these things for your Eurorack case. The scan and pan is kind of divided up into three sections. The scan section on the right side has control for center and width. Each has its own attenuator for adjusting control voltage signals and you have your outputs at the top right. You can basically use this section to scan through each of your incoming signals and widen the width of the scanning selection to include multiple channels. This kind of functions similar to a mixer and kind of closely resembles the Make Noise Rix mix but also giving you stereo out obviously with the ability to pan signals. Next in the top area you have your gain and VCA section. When the pots are set around 9 o'clock, you have unity gain, but this gets interesting when turning these clockwise past this point, which will start imparting some warm distortion to your sound. Don't underestimate the character this can give your sounds, as well as helping to balance levels of different audio sources. The VCA section can control the effects of the scanning section, imparting on the various channels. And lastly, at the bottom, you have your four inputs with the pots directly above Above for your panning control. The LEDs help display the strength of your signal or how far left and right things are panned. And the fun part, you have CV control over the panning. This is really powerful, especially if you were to be performing live, for example. And I would argue when you're making music with Eurorack synths, the better you can get things in the synth rather than having to rely on all post-processing in a DAW. There's just something more experimental and fun instead of relying on a mouse. Unless you're this guy. When it comes to panning, I have just one word for you. Automation. I'll give you some panning. Go, uh... Um, this is gonna sound so dope. Ah. Right. On to the fun stuff. For this first patch, I'm keeping things pretty basic. A little note for anyone who hasn't watched my videos before, when doing individual patches like this to start a track, my method for synchronizing things in my DAW is using the clock output on the circadian rhythms module so I can select a specific BPM and know that everything will line up right with some manual adjusting after recording. Okay. Three oscillators here, two of which are being slightly panned left and right in the first two channels, making up a pad sound. I also have a Manus oscillator from Noise Engineering, creating more of a pluck sound on the third channel. All of these sounds have slight modulation on the panning from the Batumi module from Chaos Devices to give the whole sound some movement. There's no real distortion or character being imparted here, just slight adjustments in level. And to not leave the sound too dry, I'm running it through the Make Noise Mimeophone for delay. Take a listen. These next two patches, I have an eight step sequence set up with the Renee to develop some harmonies and I'm utilizing all four outputs on one of my AJH synth VCOs. Blending together the shark tooth, sawtooth, triangle, and square wave outputs in the four channels, I'm using the scan section to shift through them to create variation in the overall output. I'm modulating the center and width sections with the Chaos Devices Batumi and Zadar modules. There is distortion imparted on the triangle and shark tooth waves and I've adjusted 
adjusted the VCA sliders to my preferences for the effect the scanning imparts on the signals. Without modulating the panning, I've adjusted a couple of the waves left and right to give the sound more width in the stereo field. And lastly, these are running through the Mimeophone and QPass filter for more ambience and texture. The Batumi is modulating the cutoff of the QPass, which gives a nice sweeping effect. My favorite way to use this module is with drums and textures, hands down. I think a big part of producing music is workflow and utilizing the panning to spread drum samples and various textures or effects left and right in the stereo field definitely speeds up my workflow rather than relying on a DAW for everything. Here I have a kick and snare pattern with some hi-hats. However, the samples I'm generating out of the WMD Fracture and Chimera as well as the Future Retro Transient are all being panned around the stereo field. The modulation is coming from the Chaos Devices Batumi and Zadar modules. Again, surprise! Mm, there they are, buried under all those patch cables. And there is some gain and distortion being applied to the fracture and transient samples. By the way, if you aren't using headphones or stereo speakers at this point, like what, what are you doing? Pay attention to the samples moving around the space. Last patch, as usual, I'm going to throw a higher register ARP style melody in the background. Just utilizing two waves from the AJH synth again through a ladder filter, we can run some subtle slow panning onto the channel to give this line some movement around the listener. Taking a sine wave from the Batumi into a Pittsburgh mixer to attenuate the signal down, and then into the pan input, we can make this sound slowly move left and right so the panning isn't like a, like a mosquito swarming around your head. I mean, I, I do live in Minnesota after all. Throwing the whole thing together with some mixing and logic, it's a pretty fun little start to a track and really no need to work on widening out the sound with automation or plugins. <laughs> Oh, almost done. 
Dude, enough with the clicking. Just throw the thing into latch mode already. What the hell is latch mode? That'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to... <laughs> Those are getting a little aggressive, I think. Don't forget to hit the like button, and otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.